In these great United Wonders, natural and southeast corner of New Mexico, not far from El Paso, Texas, is one of our country's greatest spectacles, an underground fairyland set aside by our government as a national park for the enjoyment of all the people. This is Carlsbad Caverns. The quickest way to see Carlsbad Caverns is from El Paso, reached by Southern Pacific's transcontinental trains over Golden State and Sunset routes between Chicago, New Orleans, and the Pacific Coast. En route to the caverns, many thousands of people stop at El Paso, interesting and progressive border city. Upon arrival at El Paso, our train is greeted by a native orchestra, which serenades us with gay Mexican airs as we detrain and enter our motor bus. We settle ourselves comfortably in the air-conditioned Carlsbad Caverns motor coach, and in a few minutes, we are out of the city and speeding along a fine highway. Wildflowers gaily nod their heads in the fresh morning air and smile a greeting to us from the roadside. The highway to the caverns follows the famous Butterfield Trail, closely associated with the stirring history of Texas frontier days. Long before we reach it, we see the impressive form of El Capitan, an abrupt cliff which terminates the Guadalupe Mountains. Beyond it rises Signal Peak, the highest point in Texas, whose towering crest disappears and reappears repeatedly during the day as the highway winds and curves through the hills. The Butterfield Trail was made by the hardy pioneers who used the southern route in their travel to California in search of gold in 1849. Most of the trail has been obliterated by time, but some well-preserved sections may still be seen. On our way to the caverns, we pass the ruins of an old Butterfield stage station. The approach to the caverns is made in a long winding climb through Walnut Canyon, at the end of which a sharp rise brings us abruptly out on a high mesa. And before us stands the little group of trim stone buildings of the National Park Service. The part of the caverns open to the public is reached by an easy walk down a well-made path. An electric elevator is generally used by the visitors to return to the surface. An ultra-modern touch is a cafeteria, which serves luncheon daily, 750 feet below the ground. The trip through the caverns is a leisurely one of three and a quarter hours, and each party is accompanied by uniformed rangers. The King's Palace, thought by many to be the most beautiful in this or any other cavern, is entered through a maze of delicate stone draperies. Almost circular in form, the King's Palace is about 150 feet in diameter. These marvelous formations were 60 million years in the making, that being the age of the caverns as computed by scientists. Largest in the world, the Carlsbad Caverns, beyond any doubt, are nature's greatest achievement. This formation, called the Twin Seals, looks for all the world like two giant performing seals, snouts upturned, waiting for big rubber balls to balance. A comparison of the figures with the top of the passageway gives some idea of the immensity of the caverns. At no time does anyone have any feeling of claustrophobia. The chambers, like great cathedrals, are so vast, so high, that one's only feeling is a mingling of amazement and wonder at this masterpiece of nature's handiwork.
giant dome which is located in the big room is 62 feet high and is the largest stalagmite in the world. Some idea of how little one has the feeling of being underground is given you by the name of this room, the Temple of the Sun. It is one of the cavern's outstanding formations, its exquisite beauty emphasized by the thousands of delicate stalactites hanging from the ceiling. It is only natural that the room adjoining the King's Palace should be named the Queen's Chamber, as this one is. Its beautiful onyx draperies and its lace-like formations make it a fit setting for the spouse of an underworld monarch. The Queen's Room is particularly noted for its sheet stalactites, popularly known as elephant ears, some of which hang straight down, while others are draped or folded. Some of these are so translucent that a light placed behind them brings out faint tints of pink and tea rose. Particularly interesting in this chamber are the helictites, whose interlaced form resembles an impenetrable thicket of thorns. The largest chamber in the caverns, called the Big Room, is 4,000 feet long, 625 feet wide, and 350 feet high. There is not enough portable lighting equipment in all Hollywood to photograph it. The light standards you see are not regular cavern illumination, but a part of our photographic equipment. This formation is known as Santa Claus. He appears to be a little on the thin side to conform with the popular conception of Saint Nick. And the big bag of toys the jovial saint is customarily shown carrying is woefully missing. However, when one views the top of the formation at close range, the significance of the name becomes apparent when we see the head, which is a very good resemblance with its long whiskers and a funny little peak cap. One little drop of water at a time through 60 million years. That's the way nature worked to create this beauty. It resembles a rushing waterfall frozen in midair by the arresting hand of King Winter. Some of the formations are still uncompleted. Crystal Springs Dome, the largest growing stalagmite in the caverns, is still accumulating drop by drop, a growth that began when you and I were tadpoles. The shapes and sizes of the formations are unending in their variety. There are giant mushrooms, weird totem poles, dainty lily pads, comic little gnomes, brave armored knights, fawning beggars, saintly madonnas, Dogs, cats, toads, sponges, coral reefs. The stalactites vary in size from that of a needle, feet in diameter. Outside again, we bore the bus to speed back through Walnut Canyon, across the rolling hills of New Mexico and the plains of Texas. Long vistas of range country stretch out around us in all directions. And if we watch closely, we may see a herd of antelope grazing by the roadside as we whirl by. One of the major cities of Texas, El Paso, is a thriving community full of interest and charm and merits a stopover on its own account. El Paso is on one bank of the historic Rio Grande. On the other side of the Rio Grande stands Juarez, the largest border city in Old Mexico. From the hills behind the city, El Paso spreads out in panorama before us, while beyond, stretching off into the horizon, romantic old Mexico beckons invitingly to the visitor. El Paso has a number of excellent hotels, a modern business district, and a fine residential section. It is a popular gateway to old Mexico, whose hills may be seen in the distance. El Paso del Norte is a Spanish term meeting the pass to the north, which was given by Spanish explorers coming up from Mexico to a natural break in the mountain barrier. The pass is marked by an historical marker not far from the railroad depot. 
It is from this term that the city of El Paso derived its name. The city of Juarez, Mexico, a 10 minute ride by streetcar or taxi from El Paso, gives the visitor a taste of the picturesque atmosphere of old Mexico. There is much of interest in its public market, its historic old mission, the shops and restaurants. In the public square stands a statue to Benito Juarez, Mexican reformer and liberator, and one of the Republic's great presidents. Tablets on the base depict scenes in his life, and a heroic bronze figure of Juarez surmounts the shaft. The markets of Juarez are irresistible to the ladies and how they love to shop for souvenirs. This sombrero proved to be a very becoming purchase. It's what we would call a real picture hat. Another unusual point of interest near El Paso is the White Sands National Monument, a one day trip. It is a dazzling fairyland of pure white sand that isn't sand at all, but pure alabaster. Rainwater falling in the sand turns crimson. Field mice turn pure white. The sands are a playground for mirages, and bewildering deceptions of the eye are frequently seen. It brings the day to a close and reminds us that a cheerful diner and cozy berth await our enjoyment as we speed onward through the night. When you plan your trip to the Carlsbad Caverns, remember that Southern Pacific has not one, but four great scenic routes between the East and the Pacific Coast, each through a different section of the West. By going on one of these routes and returning on another, you will see twice as much. These four routes are the sunset route between New Orleans and San Francisco, the Golden State route from Chicago, which joins the sunset route at El Paso, the overland route between Chicago and San Francisco, across the Rockies and the Great Salt Lake of Utah, and the Shasta route between San Francisco and Portland, Oregon. New Orleans, eastern terminus of the Sunset Route, is one of our country's most interesting cities. The old French Quarter, with its unique grillwork balconies and its many historic buildings, the quaint courtyards of antebellum days, the fascinating shops and the world-famous restaurants, all combine to give New Orleans an appeal which makes the visitor loath to leave. Just west of New Orleans, we cross the Great New Bridge spanning the Mississippi River and enter the plantation country of Louisiana. As our train glides along through the south, we pass stately old mansions sheltered by moss-draped oaks. This is the Deep South, the land of the magnolia and the jasmine, the land of gracious courtesy, romance and beauty. Lazy bayous dotted with cabins drift placidly in and out of the landscape as we speed onward. By going one route and returning on another, you can ride the daylight, Southern Pacific's million dollar streamliner between Los Angeles and San Francisco. The daylight speeds through fragrant orange groves, crosses a dramatic mountain range, hurries through rich farming country, and runs beside the shimmering waters of the Pacific for more than a hundred miles. The Santa Barbara Mission is located on the route of the daylight. It is one of the most appealing of the chain of 21 California missions established by the Spanish Padres in the infancy of this great Western Empire.
California's famed Monterey Peninsula is only a short side trip from Salinas, on the route of the daylight. This great playground and beauty spot is noted for its cypress groves, found nowhere else, its dramatic coastline, its picturesque towns, and popular resort hotels. Crater Lake, Oregon is located on Southern Pacific's Shasta route. This is one of nature's great marvels, an indescribably blue lake in the crater of an extinct volcano. Portland, Oregon, which centers the Pacific Northwest, is the northern terminus of the Shasta route. Connections with rail lines from the east are made at Portland. Not far from Portland is the Columbia River, and the Great Bonneville Dam. Lake Tahoe on the overland route between Chicago and San Francisco is one of the largest mountain lakes in the world. Sometimes called the Sea in the Sky, it is 23 miles long and 13 miles wide. It lies atop the Sierra Nevada mountains of California. Hotels, summer resorts, and innumerable cottages dot its inviting shores. To see this great west of ours with all the comforts of modern transportation, Southern Pacific provides a variety of fine trains, ranging from deluxe streamliners to the new economy trains that reconcile thrift and see all of the west you can and learn more about your country firsthand. But be sure to stop at El Paso, Texas and experience a profound emotional thrill by visiting that masterpiece of timeless nature, Carlsbad Caverns.